Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about how to range estimate with any reticle. Okay, so I've done videos on how to use the mill lines, right, of a scope. Uh, mill lines are very standard. The military's been using it for a long time. I've done videos on how to use a 65 MOA circle for range estimating. I've done videos on how to use uh, just the front sight post of an AR-15 for range estimating. So being able to judge the distance is really important uh, because we need to know the distance uh, in order to be able to compensate for bullet drop. Okay, now aside from that, we also want to know the distance because sometimes we just want to know how much distance we need to travel or we need to be able to communicate that information to somebody else or just make a note of it or whatever. Uh, we need to be able to judge distance. Okay, so uh, what I've been doing, right, is I've been using this range finder and I, I've been spending some time in New York City on some personal business. I've been using the opportunity to, to get familiar with how big. Uh, certain common things like cars, trucks, people, how big they are at different distances so I can um, so I can range estimate, right? And what I've been doing is I've been using the range finder uh, to, uh, to confirm that if I'm correct or if, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, however, this range finder is limited to 1,400 yards, okay? So that's, that's how this whole thing came about. Uh, I have a range finder here that I'm using that's limited to 1,400 yards. This is the SIG. Uh, kilo 1400 BDX 5 by 20 uh, So if there's any object I was looking at that was past 1400 yards this this was not working So uh, I had to come up with a method to use this to be able to range estimate and the method that I used was using the Aiming reticle that's in this range finder. So uh, let me give you guys a peek inside this thing So you know what we're looking at uh, Let me line this thing up all right, so when I line this up and I press the ranging button, right, you will see a black circle. There it is, right? You see that, bla that black circle over there? All right, that shows you 31 yards. Okay, so that, that, that black circle is basically the reticle on your scope. It could be, you know, again, it, it could be a circle. It might be, cro it might be crosshairs. It might have some other weird shape. It doesn't matter. It could just be a two M way dot if that's what you're working with. Although th the bigger is better, right? The bigger your reticle is that you're using to range estimate, the less chance of error. So in order to range estimate, right? In order to make this work, what I need, I need to know uh, two things. I need to know or a couple of things rather. I need to know what the size of that circle is, right? Right, what the size of that circle. And then I need to know at what distance will certain common things like a man or a car or a truck fit in that circle right so those are that's that's the goal to figure out those things out okay um so the first thing to figure out is what's the size of that circle so i can plug it into this form this common formula that i have here um so the first thing i try to do is i try to look it up online i tried looking up the manual for this i came up with two numbers one said two and a half mil rads the other one said three mil rads I didn't know which is correct. I said, you know what? I forget. It. I'm just going to measure this on my own. So what I did is I first, I, I, I was able to find a common ruler, right? A 12 inch ruler. Uh, now, the reason why I use a 12 inch ruler is because that's the only measuring tool I could find, right? I couldn't find a ruler that was in mil rads. If I could find a ruler that was in mil rads, I might have used that. But since uh, I, I was in the city, all I could find was a ruler in inches. That's what I went with. And, that the, and the reason why that's, that's significant is because it just so happens that at 100 yards, um, one inch corresponds to one minute of angle, right? It, it's very close. I mean, there's a slight difference, but for the most part, at 100 yards, one inch equals one minute of angle, okay? Um, so what I did is I took a ruler, I put it underneath this paper here, and I drew out these lines here, right? Uh, because the reason why I'm using, I put it on paper instead of, you know, is because it's easier for me to see the paper at 100 yards, okay? Uh, so mind you, I'm working with 3x magnification. Uh, so I took the ruler, put it underneath here. I, I drew these lines one inches apart. Um, and what I did is I put this paper on the windshield of my truck. I used the windshield wiper to hold it down in place, right? And then what I did, and I did this in the city, right? Because this is just, you know, it's just a, it's just a scope, right? It's not, it's not connected to a gun or anything. So this is something you could do right in the city, right? So I put this on my windshield, went out to where I thought was 100 yards, 
put the range finder on the paper, adjusted myself front and back to get to exactly 100 yards. And then what I did is I measured my reticle at 100 yards along this paper over here. And it just so happens that the, that circle that you guys saw a minute ago was 11 inches edge to edge, 11 inches, okay? Um, it might have been 11 and a half. I'm just using 11 inches, right? So it went 11 inches edge to edge. So what that tells me, since I'm measuring at 100 yards, it tells me that the reticle that's in this scope over here, that's in this range finder, is 11 minutes of angle big okay so now i have a measuring tool okay now if it turned out that it was bigger right let's say the circle went from edge to somewhere out here i, I just would have put two of these papers side by side on my windshield put some tape over here you know i would have had this going out to 22 inches I put three papers if i need to and that's how i would have been able to measure it now if it turned out that let's say it was shorter right or if it, it turned out that i didn't go edge to edge at 100 yards, it turns out that I really couldn't see these numbers, even with the 3X. Uh, so I would have had to redo this and make these numbers bigger, all right? So keep that in mind. You may have to make these numbers bigger, uh, like, like that big. You may have to skip a number. That's fine, um, so that you can see it at 100 yards. By coincidence, my at 100 yards, my reticle went from edge to edge, you know, uh, you know, basically 11 minutes of angle, you know, so really worked out really good for me. Um, so let's put this down for a second. So now that we know that our reticle is 11 minutes of angle big, uh, I, what I want to know is the things that I would commonly be looking at, right, at, 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 at man or at a car uh, or a truck, how, at what distance do those things fit uh within my you know fit on my reticle right because i'm going edge to edge i mean you might do it on the inside i did edge to edge of the reticle so at what distance edge to edge do those items fit on my reticle so in order to find that out i use this uh common formula here right uh basically you take the inches of this known object so the average man is about six foot tall right so you take because now we need this in inches so you take the six foot multiply it by 12 you get 72 inches right so you so you take your inches multiply it by the conversion factor 95.5 right the reason why we're using 95.5 is because this is in minutes of angle if we were doing this in mil radians right if, if my ruler was in mil radians instead of inches uh then this number here would have been 27.77 so there's no there's really no difference there's no significant difference between using minutes of angle or mil radians it's just like using inches or centimeters i happen to be using minutes of angle here so i have to use the pro the, the correct conversion number which is 95.5 so i take my inches multiply it by 95.5 and then divide it by the minutes of angle that i measured which is 11 okay so you see it down here 72 inches multiplied by 95.5 my conversion factor divided by by 11 okay my man would have to be at 625 yards to fit on my reticle edge to edge okay from from head to foot he'd have to be at 625 yards now if let's say i can only fit half the man belt to head well then he's at half the distance i would just divide this number by two uh he would be at about 312 yards and if i can only fit a quarter of the man you know let's say chest to head then you divide this number by four okay so uh once you know this information it's really easy to do some uh estimating so uh, what you can do is you can build up uh, uh, some data here right uh, and you can make yourself some cheat notes with your reticle whatever whatever it is right whatever minutes of angle you measure your reticle at um so that let's say your six foot man right uh he's got to be at 625 yards to be to match your reticle size if you're going across right because average man is about two feet shoulder to shoulder uh you know two by two times 12 that's 24 inches you, multi, you plug 24 inches into this formula uh he would have to be at 208 yards to match the reticle okay uh the average car being 15 feet long it would have to be at 1,563 yards. Right? All these numbers are on yards. Right? So we got 6, 625 yards, 208 yards here for the, for the width of the man. Uh, length over here, 15 foot long car would have to be at 1,563 yards uh, in order to match the reticle. Okay. Um, now the the width of the car, all, 
also have is, is six feet wide. Most cars are about six feet wide, which also corresponds to the, the height of the average man. So that's why this number is the same over here, right? So 625, right? So, so if you're looking at the width of a car, uh, it would have to be at 625 yards, okay, to, um, to fit in your reticle. So if you can only uh, fit half the front of the car in there, then you just uh, divide this number in half. You know, it would be at like 312 yards. Um, if you're looking at a tractor trailer, right? Most tractor trailers are about 75 feet long. All right, plug the same formula, right? Take the 75, multiply it by 12, multiply it by the conversion fact, the conversion number, 95.5, divided by 11. Your tractor trailer would have to be 7,813 yards to match the red to, for, for it to match my reticle, right? Your reticle might be different. Uh, if I can only fit half of it, then you just divide that number in half, okay? Uh, the height, average tractor trailer is about 13 and a half feet tall. Right, so again, uh, in order for it to match my reticle, if I'm looking at the height of it, yeah, it would have to be at 1,406 yards. Okay, again, all these numbers are in yards. Sometimes I say feet instead of yards, but I mean everything over here is in yards. These numbers here are in feet, these numbers here are in yards. Okay, so this is the formula. What you need to know is how big your reticle is, right? You can measure it at 100 yards with a standard ruler. Right, standard rule, just mark it on a paper. Find out how many inches big your your reticle is, and then that will then, then you will know what the minutes of angle are. Once you know the minutes of angle of your reticle, then you would basically plug the common things that you're likely to see. You know, a man, cars, tractor trailers, uh, anything else that might be common in your area, and you can use um, your reticle to range estimate. Okay, so hope this video was useful. Uh, drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you all soon.